Okay, I said I'd do an updated video on my uh, HVAC um, temporary repair on my A coil. Um, video number four, we're having issues with condensation uh, sweating on the uh, coil pan. So I'm going to pop it open. She's been running for 24 hours now. We're going to take a look inside. Uh, vast improvement. Vast improvement. So this is an issue. Uh, that I'm pretty sure a few people are aware of because there's a kit that's made. I had to do, do a lot of digging to find this kit, but there's a kit that, that is made to seal the condensation pan down on the furnace body, and it, uh, it seals up the uh, copper tubing up in here, right, so that it doesn't sweat so much. So there is a kit that's made, but let me show you what I did here. So uh, the last problem I've got, notwithstanding the, the coil's junk, It'll have to be replaced because it's it's all damaged and uh, clogged up with pet hair. Um, is if you take a look here, we've got just a little bit. So the problem is the air is not flowing through the coil properly uh, because it's clogged, uh, and it could be cleaned. But it, you know, if you take a look at this coil. In my opinion, I don't think that coils. I mean, take a look at it. I've done all I can to clean it. I and mean, I know there's coil cleaner and then all that stuff that you can buy, but the coil gets so close to the pan. I use coil cleaner. It's going to overflow the pan. I'm going to get coil cleaner all over down the side of the furnace and make a mess in here. And, and the fins are bent anyway, so I'm kind of giving up on that coil. Um, so back to the issue at hand. If you look at the core, number four, I explained how I resolved the issue. I insulated the inside, just the inside of the pan to keep it from condensating with a self-stick cork and then to prevent air from infiltrating between the flashing and the pan, I use expanding foam. If this was done installed properly, the pan would be insulated prior to install and you wouldn't, wouldn't have to do anything else because the foam insulation, which I do have some here, you just would simply take this insulation uh, and you would use something similar to this uh, or the closed cell. I'm trying to remember, Armaflex or whatever they call this. I'm sure they make this in a sheet. So I do believe it's a little bit of a, more of an open cell, but <coughs> they're both water resistant. You probably want to use the closed cell. So if you get a sheet of Armaflex, what you would do is you would take it and you'd cut it to the outside of the uh, contour of the bottom of the pan. You've got to completely wrap the pan. And what I would do is I'd use contact cement. So the whole bottom of the pan on the inside, bottom, and outside of the pan, the whole pan would be wrapped with that so that it wouldn't sweat, period. End of discussion. And then that would seal your pan against your housing so it wouldn't leak air, because that was going on. That's That was half the problem. This is after I had fixed the condensation line. The, the pan's not sitting flat on the flashing anyway because they didn't install it right. So what happened is air was getting through, but air would have got through anyway. It's not an airtight seal plastic on a metal piece of trim. So air was getting through, and then that was causing the condensation, right? So, <clears throat> the only thing I have left, which there's not much I can do, is I got the coil dripping because it's not flowing right. So every now and then you get a little drop of water, it comes down, and it gets on here. But it's, it's pretty pretty minor. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too concerned about that. So you take a look here, it's pretty darn dry for running all day. Uh, we've had a hot day today. And it's pretty darn dry. So I think I've solved 90% uh, of the water issue in this uh, furnace system. And I'm sure if I were to get the uh, new coil installed to get the airflow balanced, uh, we wouldn't have any more problems. I do have another idea. Uh, they make a, uh, there's another part that they make, it's a drip edge. And what it does, it's actually made by furnace manufacturers, right? It's a drip edge that goes inside here and it and it locks into the pan and it sticks out like this to catch any water that's going to fall down from the, the coil. 
So that I've read in the blogs, this is a prompt for some applications, right? So um, when I install the new coil, when that gets done, we are going to have that drip edge on there as a backup. It's not going to be left out because uh, anything I can do, you know, you know, if you can make sure it's done right and you can add safeguards so it's never going to be a problem, that's the correct way to do it. Okay. It's not the most economical. You know, you got to spend a little bit more money on doing something like that. But in the long run, it saves you a ton of money in maintenance and repairs. So uh, there you have it. I just thought I'd give a little heads up as I progress through this process. And I hope that this will help people that are going through the same problem that I am. Uh, because I think even on a good install, even on a good install, that you would have air infiltration under the pan, the drip pan. You'd have air, infl air infiltration under the drip pan that would cause the drip pan, the condensation pan, to sweat. So, sorry, it's hard for me to talk because... I'm sitting down and I just ate and I can't talk too good when I'm sitting down, bent over. So anyway, that's that's it. So hopefully this helps somebody. If you got a properly installed, or this helps some HVAC guys that are doing it right, if it's properly installed A coil and it's uh, still dripping and you're you're pulling your hair out, seal the pan to the, the housing it's sitting on, and I would insulate it. So you're gonna have to pull the A coil out to do that. Um, properly and then uh, get those drip edges that are available I forget what they call them you can look them up uh, they are made by the manufacturers uh, to catch the water that might drip off the coil and, and fall, fall straight down so hopefully this helps somebody I'm sure it will and uh, there you have it so <clears throat> we're about 90% improvement now it's getting a little fogged up but 90% improvement on this system just by doing that so uh, there you have it so you can see where I put in the court self-adhesive court you can buy that at Lowe's or Home Depot it's actually to cover the uh, inside of drawers but it's just enough insulation to stop that pan from sweating and then I sealed that up with uh, Loctite uh, foam uh, to keep the air from sucking from the back side this air would suck from the other side of the coil and then come through and cause it to sweat so there you have it. So learn another thing, you know, stepping through and you kind of learn a little bit about the, uh, the systems. I think it's kind of neat. Uh, you learn how to make something a little better, learn how to figure out how to have something a little better. <laughs> you know what I mean? So kind of excited that every step it's getting a little better on this whole thing. And I'm figuring out stuff that normally wouldn't happen <laughs> in the average install, but that's my luck, right? So anyway, Hopefully that uh, will help somebody. I'm going to do another video as I progress through this thing um, and get through it. So uh, do a final video when it's all done.